This video continues our exploration of shortest path algorithms, and in particular, I want to look at the all pairs shortest path. So the previous videos looked at single source shortest path, where we talked about going from one vertex to all the others. It's interesting to note that the reason why we never talk about going from one source to one destination is that any algorithm that can find that in all cases will take just as long as the single source shortest path. But for all pairs, I actually want to find the shortest distance between every pair of vertices, which means that I'm going to fill in an entire matrix. For that reason, a lot of these algorithms will wind up using an adjacency matrix because your result is going to be a complete adjacency matrix. So at least memory wise, there's not a significant benefit to looking at smaller um, a smaller memory representation using the adjacency list and also it turns out that the representation and the algorithm itself is going to often look up things so the adjacency matrix wi matrix winds up being a good representation for a lot of these algorithms now if you happen to have a problem where all of your edges are non-negative then just repeating Dijkstra's so you call Dijkstra's once once with the start being zero, another time with start being one, another time with start being two. Turns out that's a good algorithm. Okay? If all of your edges are not negative, and it would run in v squared log v plus ve. So in a dense graph, this is basically going to be v cubed. In a sparse graph, graph this term is going to nominate, and it's v squared log v. We'll look at other algorithms that can handle the situation where we do have negative edges but no negative cycles. The simplest algorithm, and I like this algorithm in many ways just because it's kind of cool how it works, is a pseudo matrix multiplication. Okay. Um, we have this routine called extend shortest path and we pass it some matrix L and then the weight matrix which is the graph itself. Okay. And we're going to make a new matrix L prime that is the kind of a pseudo product of L and W. And so the code that's inside of here looks remarkably like a normal matrix multiplication. I run through all the rows and all the columns and uh, for, for each cell I have a loop that goes through and I take a row from the first matrix and a column from the second matrix. This is given in the indexes here. L is indexing on IK and W is indexing on KJ. So it's where this innermost loop comes in. But whereas a normal matrix multiplication is the sum of the products, this pseudo matrix multiplication is the minimum of the sums. So it looks is the, so this is the best path you've found so far from I to K. And it checks and it says, it adds that to the best path uh, on your original mapping from K to J. And it checks if that is smaller than what you already knew to how to do to get from I to J. So the idea here is I'm comparing my best way to get from uh, from I to J to my best way to get from I to K and then going from K to J. Takes the smaller of those two and makes that uh, my new best way. Okay, so in some ways it's a very simple algorithm. Uh, and once again, because we know that you will be able to get anywhere since there are no cycles in, an, in a shortest path in V minus one steps, you can We'll go ahead and use V there. You can write a slow version of this, and that slow version starts with your original value of L is W, and then you go for, in this case, it's actually V minus two steps, where you call this extended, extend the shortest path, and you multiply the value of L by W over and over and over again. You do that V minus two times, and at the end of that, the result is a matrix that gives you um, the path length between all of those pairs. You can speed this up some. 
you can make a, a faster version. So that slow version is order V to the fourth. And because this algorithm here, just like matrix multiplication, is uh, the edge length cubed, so it's it's a V cubed call, and we stuck it in a loop here that happens order V times. So it's pretty easy to see that it's order V to the fourth. One of the nice properties about the, this pseudo matrix multiplication though, is that once you've gotten to the shortest path, multiplying again doesn't change the matrix. It stays fixed. So you could actually multiply more than what you were supposed to. You, know, you might wonder, why would I want to do this more? But instead of directly multiplying out, you can square. So you can do repeated squaring. So you'll note here, we start off with our original graph weights being an L. But then the way we extend it is we square. So we go from the what you can get in one step to two. The, short, the slow algorithm then goes to three. This fast algorithm basically goes to four, and then to eight, and to 16. And you wind up going too far, in a sense, but you do it through a log number of multiplications. And so the faster version is v cubed log v. We'll run through and kind of see how this works in the next video.